Welcome to the Lady Landlords Podcast, where we empower women to gain financial independence through real estate investing. I'm your host, Becky Nova, founder of Lady Landlords. If you're ready to buy, manage, and grow your real estate portfolio, then let's get started. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Lady Landlords podcast. Today, we are talking about end of year finances, planning, all of those things that we should be thinking about. Right now, as I'm recording this video, we have about a month left um, of the of 2022 here. It's crazy how fast that this year has gone by, but we're now in that place where we have... Thanksgiving's in a couple days, and we all know that we kind of take off that Thursday, Friday. Then by the time we get back, it is just absolutely a whirlwind before all of a sudden then we get to the December holidays, and that's really just kind of year over. So this time of year is a great time to really reflect on what we've already accomplished, what we'd like to have seen, and then really start planning for what we want to have happen in the new year. So I have some tips for some newbies, and then also for those of you that already own property, on just things that we should be thinking about this time of year. Now, regardless of who you are, I always encourage people to do vision boards. This is a great time to be able to do that and to start dreaming and thinking about what we want to see in 2023. So I highly recommend you carve out some time. I gotta be honest, I do this at my house every single December. And it's just fun to lay out a whole bunch of magazines throughout my living room floor. I get a nice cup of tea. I cuddle up and I'm really just able to sit there and go through those and start to visualize what I would like to see in the new year. I, if you've ever done a vision board, um, you would know that usually down the line when you do that, it's just crazy. And I totally thought, that this was totally an impossibility when the first person told me this. So I'm going to say it to you though, but from the other side now, but it's really great when you're able to kind of look back at a vision board and really see all the things that you have accomplished, all the things that you put on there that have actually kind of come true. Um, Like I said, that to me, I was shocked the first time I did a vision board. And ever since then, I've really been kind of hooked. So we'll be talking in a future episode about what's going on my vision board um, in a couple of weeks, but I want you to start thinking about that and see if you can kind of get time on your calendar to be able to do that. That's going to really help you be able to break then the goals that you want down from 2023 on what goals you need to hit each quarter. And then really that's going to start to create your action plan for you. So it really kind of starts with that dream big, and then you can work your way back to what you have to be doing and what steps you need to take in order to reach those goals. So. If you are not sure, if you are new to real estate investing and you're like, great, I know I want a house. I don't know how to do that. Becky, what do I do? We got some tips for you. So to start off on this side, I just wanted to share, there were a couple things that I was thinking about of just really simple ways that a lot of women get started within real estate investing. I've kind of been pulling the group as I normally do throughout, throughout the year. And there were actually two strategies that seem to be the most popular way for those that are getting started to get that first property. And then I want to share a third way of something that I've actually done um, in the past that I didn't really necessarily think was so related, but honestly, it really is. So um, first tip, first way that I see a lot of new investors get started is with a term called house hacking. Okay. If you are unfamiliar with house hacking, house hacking is when you purchase a multifamily property. It is then owner occupied. You live in one side of the property and you rent out the other units, okay? So it could be a duplex, triplex, quadplex, um, however many units that are there. You're usually looking at staying under five as that's what qualifies for residential housing. And when you apply for that residential housing mortgage, if you are living in it, meaning it's owner occupied, you can take advantage of a lower down payment, okay? When you purchase investment properties, you're right now you're looking at 25% down on those. But when you house hack, when you own or occupy a property, there is a possibility to put down three and a half or 5%. That is a huge difference. It really, really changes 
the um, barrier to cost of entry here. So it's a great, that's why so many people really get started. It allows them to be able to move into that property. Okay. So house hacking is a great, great way to get started. You can also do, I'm going to coin it room hack. Room hack is even if you have a single family or you have, live in an apartment and you have extra rooms. So for example, I did not think about this until we really got going with lady landlords, but I actually used to room hack back when I was in college. What I mean by that is I lived in a townhouse down in the DC area. And when my roommates moved out of that townhouse, I actually took over the lease. So I guess this was actually house hacking arbitrage, but I took over the lease from my, um, for the full townhouse. And then I rented out the extra rooms. So what did I do? I made those rooms a little bit more expensive. So then that way I actually didn't have to pay to live there. The two other roommates that I had, who I hope aren't watching this now, but my two other roommates um, were actually covering my, the entire cost of the lease. So then really I was able to lower my cost of living. And that is the whole goal within house hacking or room hacking is really to make sure that we are able to decrease what our cost of living is. How does that help? Well, first off, we had that lower down payment. So we were able to actually get that property, but we don't want to just buy one property. We want to be able to buy another property. And what do we need to do that? Well, we're going to need some capital. So by lowering our cost of living, then you are now able to save more money for that next property. So for example, I currently live in a house hack with my husband, Emilio, and we live over here in New York. In New York, we kind of have a high cost of living, but most, let's say, for example, I would be spending two grand, $2,500 minimum probably um, to live in a similar property to what I live in now if I was renting from somebody else. But our, um, the other unit within the building we live really covers the mortgage. That means I get to live for free, which means that I get $2,500 really that I'm saving every single month that I get to put into a savings bucket for my next rental property, right? That money really kind of adds up. We're talking almost $30,000 a year um, just by house hacking that I can save. So house hacking is a great way to get started if you're looking to move and you want to live close to your tenants. If you don't, or if you are looking to um, possibly invest in a longer distance type space, another great way to really be able to get started is by looking into turnkey properties, okay? They, this is something that I feel like not, I see often, but not as much as, as I feel like a lot of people can utilize this. If you are in a high cost of living area, and you're saying, but Becky, I don't have that 25% down for investment property. And hey, I'm not looking for a multifamily. I don't want to live next to my tenants. It's not the way that I want to go. And I don't want to move. Looking at turnkey properties is a great way to be able to go. That way, you don't have to worry about rehabbing contractors, finding tenants, all of those different things with a turnkey property. A turnkey property is something that, that you really are looking at the numbers and evaluating from the numbers to be able to purchase those properties. So this is a great way. I've had a couple different clients. We've had Haley do this. I've had Patty do this, where they've been able to be living in a New York, California type of market. And they said, you know, this really just is not fitting either from a budget perspective or from a competition perspective or um, tenant landlord laws where they're able to invest in other states by looking into turnkey properties. This really allows you to be able to buy that property, usually with the tenant already in place, property's already been in good shape, it's already rehab, ready to go, where literally you turn that key. The third way that is a great option to be able to get started within real estate investing, and this is the one that I was saying, I did not necessarily think of um, when I first started out, but this was actually something that I was doing, um, is to look into private lending. Now, when I say private lending, in this case, I actually mean to be the private lender yourself. This is a great way that if you're not necessarily ready to purchase that property, you have some savings, you want to be able to increase those savings, it is a great opportunity to be able to lend out money to other investors 
for a for interest payments. This is something that then you want to look for more shorter term loans and opportunities where you can park your money for maybe a few months, maybe a year, year and a half, something like that, until you're really ready to be able to buy. But it's a great way to be able to be very passive, very hands-off, and be able to continue to increase your savings. Listen, I'm incredibly happy that now here in 2022, my high-yield savings account has gotten all the way to 3%. Um, that's fantastic compared to the 0.25, 0.5s that we've been seeing over the past couple of years. Does not necessarily offset inflation though. So I need to be able to do other things to make sure that my money is not losing value over time and that I can also increase the capital that I have on hand um, as I'm waiting to be able to purchase another property. So private lending could just be the thing that you need to ensure that you are having higher interest being able to come in on the capital that you already have. Now, you might be saying on the other side, hey, but Becky, I already have my property. What are the things that I should be thinking about? Don't worry, I have something for you too. So these are just some things that I want you to be thinking about, especially as we're coming to year end of the year close. This is a great time to start, start thinking now about that dreaded word, taxes. So it's a great opportunity before the end of the year to figure out what your planning is gonna look like and how you're gonna be planning for your taxes in the next year. If you are looking to move to working with the CPA or to change to a different CPA, this is absolutely the time that you want to be talking to new CPAs. Nobody wants to be answering questions about if they're the right fit for you come March or April of 2023. Now, before the end of the year, is a great opportunity to be able to get some face time with some accountants, some CPAs, to be able to ask some questions to see if they're going to be a good fit for you, okay? So not only that, but you want to think about what else you need to be able to do um, with some of that money before the end of the year. This is either a great time to still be able to pick up another investment property to um, for some tax benefits. If you have extra cash, um, that might be something that you want to do. It's also a great opportunity if you're not looking to purchase another house in the next few weeks to be able to see if you can max out some of your retirement contributions or anything else that you can really do to decrease your taxes. Now, I also do wanna mention that this is a reason that we want to make sure to talk to tax planners because I've noticed that some people tend to get stuck with being so excited for the tax deductions that real estate allows, but then all of a sudden they put them in a bad position to be able to buy. For example, let's say now, I put as much money away in different places so that way I can lower what my total income is, which then decreases what my taxes are. Then I go, I do my taxes now in 2023, and I get to show the least amount of income possible because I had a ton of deductions. Well, what you have to be careful with though is how that's going to affect your DTI. All of a sudden I'm seeing people that are then going to purchase properties that they're going to look for mortgages. And now those underwriters are saying, hey, we cannot lend to you. And when we ask why, the answer is, well, you didn't really make a, not a lot of money last year, right? Or you had a loss on your rental business. And that's really becoming from some of these tax deductions. So it's incredibly important that you make sure to talk to your tax preparer now to do that planning. So that way you have an understanding of what you want to have happen in the next year, okay? This is also a great opportunity if you did not listen to last week's episode, we went all over how to use 1031 exchanges as well for tax deferment. So if you did not listen to that episode, do make sure to go back and take a listen to that. That might be something that will be able to help you in the next year, but it takes a lot of planning and really tight timelines in order to be able to do that. So go back, take a listen to that 1031 episode as that's something else that you're going to want to be able to discuss with your CPA moving forward, okay? Also, I'm going to loop this whole uh, podcast episode today right back to the first thing that I said is this is why it's important to have that vision board, okay? I actually go over my goals for the new year, what my vision is with my accountant, with my financial advisor, because these are people that have to have an understanding of the things that I would like to accomplish in the new year so that way they can actually advise me with the best pieces of information. 
So do make sure to give them that snapshot. Do make sure to take some time to sit and think about what you would like to see in 2023, because that is so not very far off, ladies. We will be there in a few weeks. But I hope that helps you be able to plan for the new year. If you need assistance with coming up with what the new year should look like and want to talk farther, please do make sure to check out the Lady Landlords Mentorship Program. You can learn more at lady-landlords.com. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week. We release new episodes of the Lady Landlords podcast every single Tuesday. So do make sure to subscribe, whether you watch us on YouTube or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're feeling stuck in your real estate journey, visit lady-landlords.com slash roadmap to book a one-on-one -on -one workshop with me. I'll help you determine your next best strategy. Or you could subscribe to our newsletter for exclusive tips and offers. Invest with confidence. Become a lady landlord today.